Welcome to Quick Poker, everybody. I'm Frank Carlino. Bankroll update. 136.47. Daily bonus collection. So what's special about day seven? There could be a bonus bonus. Let's go. We have won an uncommon free entry into a gold coin. It's completely useless to me, but thanks anyway. Global bankroll update after collecting daily bonus. 137.47. Spreadsheet update. All right, so I updated all my cash outs. Uh, you remember in the beginning of the year, January 1st, 2024, we had 25 cents. I don't have uh, everyday statistics for all of January and the beginning of February, but we had some cash outs. We left ourselves with 21.15, started doing this cool spreadsheet. Painstaking 5% rule, if you remember that. Slowly grinded it up. Started keeping track in an even cooler way like this, and then had a bad downswing. Did a cash out, left myself with no money. March 12th, well, two dollars. Turned that into 117 in like five days. Had a really bad day on uh, 317. Cashed that out. Marked the cash out here, 56. Left myself with no money. Cashed in my rake back. Left myself with 57. Last couple days we went from 71 to 103, and today. We went from 103 to 136. 2024 deposits, zero. No deposits, no deposits. And today we have 137.47. Just add 137.47 and then add all these cash outs up, these four cash outs, yeah? And then subtract 25 cents and that's how much I've actually made. Listen, I'm sorry for not making more, but uh, I'm just happy I haven't made a deposit. Today started out as a disaster. The fact that we're up uh, three and a half buy-ins today is, I don't know how I did it. So we have kings. We see an early position open. Uh, we get a little min three bet. Min three bet either means a really, really, really conservatively bad player who's the worst player type has aces. I four bet. I get the original three better, I believe, out. Uh, the original raiser is out. Now the three better doesn't even think about four betting. Uh, about five betting and just calls so yeah he could have tens eights or fives i'm gonna check out of position to see what he does he checks back uh and i'm gonna check one more time all right he bets 2.3 okay so now i'm just gonna target ace queen and since he only has 573 left i just want to go for the jam because his hand feels like ace queen right i don't have any ace in my hand i don't block it ace queen at all he didn't bet the flop. He just called. So taking the chance that he does have a set, I'm just going to check jam. Try to get value from uh, ace-queen by making my hand look like a scared ace-king of diamonds. And he snaps me off, and he had a set of 10. So nice hand by that guy. So yeah, down a buy-in. This hand is versus from Chom is over here. Zacharan is up here above me. Right up there, that's Zacharan. I only have like $90 in my account at this time. I don't want to play like high variance, so... I wind up just flatting the pocket threes and not three bidding from Chom in position, and I wind up paying for it. So this is a horrible no three bet by me, and that's going to let our, our boy Zaka Ren in. So Zaka Ren's in, and he had more of the type of hand that he should really just call with in position and not three bet. I had the hand I should have three bet because, you know, from Chom is so aggressive. But, you know, sometimes you just don't want to mess with from Chom when you don't have a big bankroll because he's going to force you to play a crazy style, so... He checks. Um, I think he might have top set when he checks or even middle set. But at the same time, I think from Chom probably thinks more like I think. And I don't like checking sets, especially when I'm the preflop raiser. I feel like he doesn't have a set. And now I'm just going to go to town and start betting big with my set. Get value from all kinds of draws. So Zacharan winds up just smooth calling. Zacharan is conservative, but he's at least aggressive when he has it. That's why I have him as a red tag and not a blue. Because I think he's like a good tight aggressive player. But he is very like he has it a lot he doesn't really get involved that much when he doesn't have it so at this point i'm putting him on still possibly three nines but probably more like a hand like queen jack king queen or a flush draw or a straight draw and look at this so from chum check raises two people you're just like a sick sick puppy bro because he does wind up folding i'll spoil it now but i just wanted to tell you that now because he obviously didn't have anything that great so he check raises two people. Probably like a bet size that's going to keep them in too. I'm not going anywhere. And call, call. So 10 of hearts, 10 of hearts is terrible. So losing to a flush now. I check because I'm afraid of the flush. Zacharan bets 5-11. Okay. I don't beat sets. I have lowest set. I don't beat flushes. I don't beat straights. Is he really going to bet two pair? 
like this. No, he probably has a flush. So what I should do is really, honestly, really consider folding. So what do I do? I jam. Of course I jam. Right into a flush. And uh, the board does not pair, and it holds up. So nice hand, Zacharen. Played it very straightforward. I mean, like I said, Zacharen is very, like, tight, aggressive, but when he puts money in like that, he has it. So, I mean, with him putting that much in with so little behind, just... I had just lost a big hand with Kings. Probably a little bit of uh, a little bit of tilty spew there for me. So now we're down 20. This is complexity. Complexity is a crazy boy to say the least. I don't know if you've ever played with complexity, but he is a serious wild man. And he will put you to the test constantly. And he doesn't care what he has. He's coming in raising. He has these all-in bluffs, overbet bluffs. He's just a, a sick, 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 sick guy. Now, like, from Chom is, like, sick in a controlled way, and Complexity is just sick in a lunatic, crazy boy way. So, 6-9. Uh, he never folds anyway. He's never going to think I'm going to bet a 6. So, first of all, I overcall with the 6-9 in the first place because he's loose enough that he doesn't have a high pocket pair. I have live cards, and I know he's not going to fold if I hit big. So, that's why I call it pre-flop. And then I just bet right into him. Because he's never folding anyway. So I, I figure he'll jam here. He'll jam his bluffs. He'll jam his value. He has just a 10. And um, he didn't know what else to do. He didn't want to fold the top pair. So he wind up uh, jamming. And we hold up with trip 6. Leading your trips. I've made videos about it. Leading trips into the preflop raiser is smarter than you think. Checking is not always the best play. Because he's never going to think you bet trips. So his value might raise and his bluffs might raise. So complexity is on tilt from the last hand. He makes it 1.1. I'm looking at ace-king suited. I don't care that I don't have a pair. I'm just going to 3-bet huge. And I'm also going to get it in on any flop. He doesn't fold to 3-bets, really, ever. So my huge 3-bet works out. Now there's already 9.55 in the pot. So I flop the ace and I go for the check because he's probably drawing dead, right? So I check. And then he jams the turn on a jack. We obviously snapped ball, and he had a king and a six. He was just a little bit tilted here. Now we're on the comeback trail. Now we're up to 30, but we're actually still down. So we're in for like 35 here. We got $30 at the table, and we're still down at a $10 table. If you log into Global and you see me at, with $47 and at one table and $75 at another, I'm still down. <laughs> I'm still down on the day. Open the ace-queen suited. Okay. Complexity is going to like make a small 3-bet against all these players. That's kind of scary, a smaller 3-bet. I think he should be either 3-bet either big or like not 3-bet at all. But a small 3-bet, if you have a really big hand, don't you want to narrow the field? And if you have a not that great of a hand, don't you want to just see the flop for cheaper and not get 4-bet? So I don't know what he's doing here with this 3-bet. Um, so I just 4-bet huge. I'm just trying to get it in at this point. Um, he was playing so crazy that I don't care what he had. Like I, He's been stacked by me the last couple of hands. And then he actually outplays me here and gets it in with pocket eights. I just call it off at that point, and we're lucky enough to... Actually, we both make a straight, but I make the super straight with the ace. This hand, I really blew it. So we have ace four of clubs. Complexity opens to 90. He's deep enough. I call. So let's see what kind of bet sizing he uses. Okay, 146. If he had pocket kings, he should probably still bet that, but he probably doesn't have pocket kings. Um, I don't know how he plays flop full houses. I mean, I don't think I would check. I mean, a lot of people are checking there, but I'm just going to put him on ace king. Okay, bink the club, um, and he bets again pretty big. And I just call. And now, unfortunately, another club comes. So now he goes into check the side mode. He checks, and I don't... I don't jam. I just go seven. He winds up actually finding the fold. So uh, my mistake there was not jamming the turn. The reason I don't jam the turn is because the chance of another club coming is very small. Plus, I have to keep his bluffs in. But it turned out if I did jam the turn, I would have got it all. Because he obviously had ace-king or king-queen or something, and he's never folding. I should have known from his sizing that he wasn't bluffing. Because even though he's crazy, he doesn't really go big bet, big bet that often from out of position. He's down to 12.84. He's in for like 40 or 50. Uh, he makes it one. I'm delighted when I have aces. And uh, I'm just going to make it 3.45. Kind of a, a massage uh, three bet. He just calls. Uh, checks the jack, jack seven, jack, jack seven flop. I check it back. The turn comes another seven. 
And he's going to rep a jack or a seven, and he decides to actually jam 939. I snap call. I snap call, and he just had king 10 for a, a pure bluff. We're all the way up to 5665. He winds up beating me in this hand, where I have ace king suited. I have no choice but to three bet big. And then um, he just out, either outflopped me or outplayed me after this. I make the C bet. He calls. I just shut down on that card. I don't know what else to do. Now I can't beat anything. Um, he jams and I fold. The only hand I could really beat was maybe ace jack with the ace of spades that floated and is now bluffing. But yeah, I fold there. So yeah, so that's how we wound up winning three and a half buy-ins today after being down two buy-ins. If you want to add all this up, all the cash outs, and then add this up and then subtract 25 cents, you'll know how much I'm up for 2024. Once again, sorry for not being up more. Eh, poker is hard. And uh, that's all I got for you today on Quick Poker. Uh, if you want to see me win a big, giant amount of money, in one day, uh, check out this video. If you want to see the video on me talking about why it's a G move to lead flop trips, check out uh, that video up there. So I'll see you all tomorrow, and thanks for watching.